Right then, let's talk about aeroplanes. Specifically, a very important new one called the Comac C919. Imagine a brand new passenger jet built to carry around 160 people, which is the sort of size you'd find on a typical hop from London to Rome. This isn't just any old plane though. This is China's grand statement to the world of aviation. For decades, if an airline wanted a new single-aisle jet, they really only had two places to go. Boeing in America, or Airbus in Europe. The C9119 was designed to change all that, to break up the cozy two-player game that has dominated the skies for as long as most of us can remember. It was meant to be the third option, a proper challenger. The excitement surrounding the C919 was, you have to admit, quite palpable. Here was a machine that looked remarkably like its Western counterparts, promising modern efficiency and comfort. For airlines, the idea of a new competitor was brilliant news. Competition, after all, usually means lower prices and more innovation. People in the industry started to wonder if this was the beginning of the end for the Boeing Airbus duopoly. The C919 represented not just a new aircraft, but a fundamental shift in global manufacturing power. It was a symbol of China's technological ambition, a gleaming metal tube that shouted, we can do this too. It was a very big deal indeed. On the surface, everything looked rather promising. The plane had its maiden flight, it entered commercial service with a major Chinese airline, and it started flying actual paying passengers on domestic routes within China. The project appeared to be hitting its key milestones, ticking the boxes one by one. The Chinese government threw its full weight behind the program, ensuring a steady stream of domestic orders from its state-owned airlines. This created a solid foundation and gave the impression of a program that was rocketing towards success. From a distance, it looked like the plan was working perfectly, and the duopoly's days were numbered. But now, as we stand here on October 18, 2025, a rather large spanner has appeared in the works. The initial fanfare has faded, replaced by a sense of quiet concern and, frankly, surprise among aviation experts. The grand vision of the C919 gracing airports from Paris to Peru has hit a rather significant wall. The problems stacking up are not small, technical glitches that can be fixed with a bit of tinkering. They are fundamental, systemic issues that question the aircraft's entire global strategy. The shocking reality is that this Challenger, the one that was supposed to shake up the world, is finding itself stuck in its own backyard. The biggest and most immediate problem for the C919 is a mountain of paperwork. Or rather, the lack of it. In the world of aviation, you can't just build a plane and start selling it to anyone who fancies one. It must be certified as safe by various official bodies. In Europe, this is the job of the European Union Aviation Safety Agency, and in the United States, it's the Federal Aviation Administration. Without a stamp of approval from these two organizations, the C919 is, for all intents and purposes, barred from flying in most of the world. It's like having a brilliant new car that you're not legally allowed to drive outside of your own village. This lack of international certification is the single greatest obstacle to the C919's global ambitions. While COMAC is working to get the ESA's approval, the process is notoriously long, incredibly detailed, and politically sensitive. These agencies need to be completely convinced that every single component, every line of software code, and every manufacturing process meets their exacting safety standards. It's a process that can take years, and there is no guarantee of success at the end of it. This regulatory wall effectively confines the C919 to operating within China and a few other countries that might accept China's own domestic certification, which is a very small market. International airlines, even those desperate for new planes, are therefore watching from the sidelines. They simply cannot buy an aircraft that their own country's regulators won't allow into their airspace. Imagine a major European carrier trying to explain to its customers that their new fleet of jets isn't permitted to land in, well, most of Europe. It's a non-starter. This is why you haven't seen the likes of British Airways or Lufthansa queuing up to place an order. They are taking a wait and see approach, observing closely but keeping their checkbooks firmly in their pockets until the certification puzzle is solved once and for all. The situation has created a bizarre paradox. Boeing and Airbus are struggling to build planes fast enough to meet demand, with their order books full for the rest of the decade. In theory, this should be the perfect moment for the C919 to swoop in and capture a huge slice of the market. Airlines need planes and Comac has a new one ready to go. 
Yet, it can't. The door is wide open, but the C919 is blocked from walking through it. This regulatory hurdle has turned what should have been a golden opportunity into a period of frustrating stagnation for the Chinese manufacturer. Another rather large headache for Comac is the speed at which it is actually building the C919, or to be more precise, the lack of speed. The goal was to establish a production system that could churn out 150 of these jets every year by 2028, a number that would make it a genuine competitor. However, the reality on the ground is falling shockingly short of these ambitions. Throughout 2024, the company managed to deliver only about a dozen aircraft. At the current pace of roughly one plane per month, it simply cannot hope to challenge the manufacturing might of Boeing and Airbus, who deliver hundreds of aircraft each year. This slow production rate has a serious knock-on effect. As of today, only a handful of C919s are in service. By the end of last year, a mere 14 aircraft had been delivered, almost all of them to just three major Chinese airlines, China Eastern, Air China, and China Southern. While these domestic carriers have placed large follow-on orders, demonstrating national confidence, it does little to prove the aircraft's global appeal. The C919 fleet is tiny, and its operational world is even smaller. The plane has become a rare sight, even within China, let alone anywhere else on the globe. This leads us to the next problem, the distinct lack of international customers. Outside of China, the C919's order book is alarmingly bare. There was a flicker of excitement in late 2023 when a new Bruneian airline called Gallup Air signed a deal for 30 aircraft. However, even this first international order is stalled. The planes cannot be delivered because Brunei's own aviation authority is waiting for international certification before it gives the green light. Other airlines in Southeast Asia and beyond have expressed polite interest, but none have signed a firm contract often stating that a deal is entirely dependent on that all-important ESA or FAA approval. Comac has been trying hard to change this. It has been on a marketing offensive, offering attractive financing deals and support packages to potential customers in countries like Indonesia and Kazakhstan. It has even opened its first overseas offices in Jakarta and Singapore to build a support network, which is a crucial step. But so far, these efforts have failed to translate into firm, deliverable orders. The aviation world is conservative. Airlines want a proven product with a guaranteed global support network and, above all, one that is certified to fly everywhere they need it to go. Right now, the C919 doesn't tick those boxes. So, is it all doom and gloom for the C919? Not entirely, there are a few glimmers on the horizon, Comac is actively pursuing that vital ESA certification and remains hopeful of securing it, perhaps even sometime this year or next. If that happens, it would be a monumental breakthrough, instantly making the aircraft a viable option for a much wider range of airlines. Furthermore, the company is making some technical progress. It has already delivered the first extended-range version of the C919, which can fly significantly farther than the standard model, making it more flexible for potential airline customers and a more useful bit of kit. Strategic partnerships are also being put in place to build a more robust future for the aircraft. Just last year, on October 15, 2024, Comac expanded a deal with a company called FDH Aero. This partnership is designed to improve the C919 supply chain and aftermarket services, which is the network that provides spare parts and maintenance support around the world. Building this infrastructure is just as important as building the plane itself. Airlines need to know that if a part breaks in a foreign airport, a replacement can be sourced quickly. These small, unglamorous steps are essential for building long-term confidence in the program. Despite these positive moves, the clock is ticking. The massive delivery backlogs at Boeing and Airbus won't last forever, and new, even more efficient aircraft designs are already on the drawing board. If the C919 remains stuck in its certification and production quagmire for too much longer, its window of opportunity could close. The program needs to build momentum, get planes delivered to international customers, and prove its reliability and efficiency in real-world operations outside of its protected home market. Without this, it risks becoming a mere footnote in aviation history, a regional player rather than the global giant it was intended to be. For us, the people who fly, this all matters a great deal. 
The arrival of a true third competitor in the passenger jet market would be brilliant. It would foster competition, potentially leading to lower airfares and more innovative cabin designs. It would also make the global supply of new aircraft more resilient. So airlines aren't completely dependent on just two manufacturers. The troubles of the C919 are not just a story about one aeroplane, they are about the future shape of the entire aviation industry. Whether it overcomes these challenges or not will determine if our choices for air travel get bigger or if the familiar duopoly continues to rule the skies. We shall have to wait and see.